To install our ejection port door onto our AR-15 upper receiver, we'll need our upper receiver, our ejection port door, our ejection port pin, ejection port spring, ejection port C-clip, and the only tool we'll need is a pair of pliers. Installing the ejection port cover is a simple task, but it is somewhat tedious to do. On our pin, see the little groove or channel right here? We've got to get our C-clip onto that channel. And it's hard to do because if you don't get it right, these little clips have a tendency of getting away on you. So I'm going to take my pliers and get the clip onto that channel. And now I'm going to just simply pinch with my pliers, crimp that C-clip tight. So it's now tight in that channel. Now I'm going to take my pin with the C-clip pointing toward the barrel. I'm going to insert the pin from the barrel side. We'll get it started slightly. Then I'm going to take my door, ejection cover door, I'm going to slide the pin in until we get to the opening area where the spring will go. Now this is the fun part. We're going to take our spring. We're going to orient it with the short side to the left, the long leg to the right. So the short leg has to be pressed up against the side of the receiver, like that. This other leg, we're going to rotate the spring so that the long arm is now resting on the door. This gives our spring tension to open and shut the door. Alright, so I'm going to start by putting the short end of the spring against the receiver. And I'm going to take and I'm going to rotate this long arm 180 degrees so that it's now resting on the door. And I'm going to take my pin start advancing it further into the spring Keep my left finger on the short end until I can get this threaded all the way. There we go. So let me zoom a little tighter now. So now you can see our short end of the spring is against the frame of the receiver. The long arm is rotated 180, degree, 180 degrees and it's resting against the door. Now our door should open. It's got a little tension when we close it and tension when we open it. Or tension is released when we open it. Alright. Now as you can see this pin is not held in yet it's just sitting there. Um, when we put our barrel nut on and our uh, front rails, that's going to pin or contain that's this, this uh, pin from being able to push out. So it'll have something, the barrel nut will be sitting here and that prevents this pin from walking out. And that's all it takes to install our ejection cover door.
To install our forward assist onto our AR-15 upper receiver, we'll need our forward assist, forward assist spring, forward assist retaining pin. This is a 332 by 5 8 inch retaining pin. A number 3 or 3 32nd row pin punch and a number 3 row pin starter punch. So the purpose of our forward assist is to uh, drive our bolt carrier forward if it's not completely in battery. Now these little grooves on the side of the bow carrier are what the forward assist uh, engages in to drive the bow carrier forward. This front section of the forward assist, this little tooth, is what engages in these little slots to push the bow carrier forward. So when we in install the, the forward assist we need to make sure the tooth of the forward assist is on the pointing toward the upper receiver because we want those that tooth to engage into the bolt carrier group and when we put this retainer pin in since this forward assist is going to be under spring tension we'll need to depress it to make sure that this pin is going to go in uh, it's going to drive in in this section of the forward assist so it can retain it. So I'm going to use an AR-15 upper receiver vice block to hold our upper receiver while we install the forward assist. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my retaining pin and I'm going to put some oil on it just to make the insertion a little easier. I'm going to take our number three row pin starter punch and I'm just going to get this started before we insert the forward assist. So now I'm going to insert the spring over the forward assist, tooth pointing inward toward the upper receiver. And I'm going to depress it. I'm going to put my row pin starter punch back on. Drive it in until it bottoms out. Now I'm going to take a regular row pin and complete the job. And that looks pretty good. Function check. Our forward assist is retained. Obviously we don't have a bulk carry in at this time, but uh, by all indications that should be a solid install. To install the barrel on our AR-15 upper receiver, we'll need our barrel, barrel nut, shims for our barrel nut, Tools will include our torque wrench, our barrel nut wrench, and barrel nut grease. To begin the installation of our barrel, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to lubricate the threads of our upper receiver. This is going to make life much easier in the future if you ever have to remove your barrel. To do that, we're going to be using a uh, special barrel nut grease. It's called Aero Shell. 33 ms. I'm going to put my upper on my action rod here. Get some grease on my brush. Get 
get some lubrication on here. Pretty good. Let's wipe off any excess on our barrel here. All right. Now let's get this upper on our action rod the way it's supposed to be. So next thing I want to do. Actually, I want to do the same thing. I want to put some barrel grease on my barrel itself. This will just make things a little easier in the future as well. If we have to take the barrel off. Seems like I do this stuff all the time. Take them on and off. Now you can see in our upper receiver we have a little notch right here. We want to line this pin on the barrel up with that notch like that. Installation of the barrel nut is going to vary depending on the um, rail system you have for your AR. The one I have is an Aero Precision barrel nut. I have an Aero Precision uh, rail system I'm putting on here. Um, this one requires shims because we have to index this hole right here to line up with our gas tube. So it takes a little tri trial and error to determine how many shims you're going to need um, to get everything lined up and the foot pounds you're going to require to do that. So, in general, there's a wide berth of foot-pounds for barrel nuts. I think the minimum I have seen is 30 foot-pounds, and the most I've seen is 80. Um, Aero Precision, for this particular barrel nut, has a range of 30 to 45 foot-pounds. So we have to index this hole with our gas tube hole in our upper receiver to be between 30 and 45 foot-pounds. So I'm not going to do the trial and error here, I've already done that, but it required me uh, to do nine shims to get everything lined up. So let me go ahead and get this barrel nut slid on. And tighten it. Now I need my torque wrench and a barrel nut wrench. So my torque wrench, um, to get everything lined up, I had to go to 45 pounds on my torque wrench. So let's get everything lined up here. Let's get to cranking. We got a nice click on our torque wrench. Everything should be pretty lined up. Let me change angles here on the video. From this angle, you can see I've indexed the hole for the gas tube on my barrel nut with the middle of my upper receiver. Obviously, you can't see the hole for the gas tube, but we're in the middle and these should be lined up. And we can check that by putting a gas tube on. So 
there we go. That gas tube went on pretty easy. Um, I wouldn't modify anything at this point. I think it were in good shape. So really that's it. That's um, all there is to installing the barrel onto our AR-15 upper receiver. To install the gas block system onto our AR-15 upper receiver, we'll need our gas block, gas tube, a 564 by 516 inch roll pin. The tools we'll need are a torque wrench, a number 2 or 564 inch roll pin punch, an Allen wrench, and some thread sealant. This is a high temperature um, sealant. Basically it's a red Loctite. It's what it is. When installing our gas block system one barrel feature we need to take into consideration that will make the job harder or easier is whether the um, barrel is dimpled or not. So my barrel is dimpled. Basically there's maybe a sixteenth inch uh, spot drilled down here in the barrel and that's used um, as a guide for our set screw to make sure that the gas block is lined up properly on the barrel. So if you have a dimple, your job's much easier on how to line up your gas block. If you don't have a dimple, then you've got to do a little work to make sure that uh, the gas block's lined up properly. And what we'll do on this barrel is I can go ahead and verify uh, that this dimple is in the correct location. And it would also show you how to do it yourself if you, if you don't have a dimple. So here's the gas port on our barrel. That's where the gas tube, this hole in the gas tube will sit over top of that hole and that's how the gas exits the barrel and returns back to your bulk carrier. This would be the actual proper orientation of the gas tube itself when it's installed. As you can see, the hole and the gas tube is bigger than the hole in the barrel and this gives us a little leeway uh, just in case we're not exact with our uh, placement of our uh, gas tube system. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw a line bisecting Our gas port. Like that. So I'm having to eyeball this. It's not exact, but it's going to be pretty close. The next thing I would do, this is an older uh, gas tube, gas block that I'm not installing on this rifle, but using it for demonstration, is I drew a line bisecting the middle of the gas block itself. So these two lines should meet up correctly if we do our measurements accurately. So the first measurement I'm going to take is from this um, edge here to this in inches not centimeters is where is the center of my gas port hole? So it looks like seven, seven sixteenths. Okay, I wanna remember that. The next thing I wanna do, and I can use a piece of tape to do this, is I wanna know the circumference the outside dimensions of my barrel. Alright, so right here. We can measure that. can see it. If 
to measure that. Hang it upside down. If I measure that, I am two and three eighths. So two and three eighths, half of that would be one and um, would that be four sixteenths, I think. Correction, that's going to be one and three sixteenths. One and three sixteenths. All right. So let's take our tape again. Measure one and three sixteenths on that. Right here. Put my tape on this bisecting line. Right, let me flip my barrel over. Here's our one and three sixteenths. Which I don't know, you can't see my mark I just made, but so that puts us right where my dimple is. So the other measurement we'll take, so when we measured our gas port. From this edge to the middle of the gas port, we're going to do the same thing for the dimple here. And as you can see, the middle is 7 sixteenths. So we bisected the circumference of our barrel, and we measured from this elbow in 7 sixteenths. And that makes, that verifies my dimple is in the correct location. So if you didn't have a dimple, you would put a mark right here. So to verify my dimple location or location if I did not have a dimple, slide the gas tube on. Okay, I've got it lined up. Hold my gas tube is lined up directly over the dimple or the dot I had made if I were going to make a dimple. If I flip things over, flip the barrel over. As you can see, well you can't see, so the bisecting line I made on the gas block intersects with the line I made on the barrel. And I'll see if I can change angles so you can see that. Now it's time to begin the installation of the gas block system itself. So I'm going to be installing a superlative arms adjustable gas block system. Here's the actual gas block. Here's the adjustment screw right here. So when you're out in the field shooting, uh, if you need to make changes to your gas block, um, you can reach from the front through the rail and make quick adjustments with this Allen wrench. So most ARs, 
that I have seen um, come from the factory or with a standard gas block or overgassed systems. Well, what what does overgassed mean? Um, overgassed means that you have more gas coming back to the bulk carrier group than is actually necessary to operate the gun. So why why would manufacturers do that? Um, the best explanation I've heard is that uh, guns are overgassed so that they run when they're not well maintained or they're extremely dirty and gritty. So soldiers in the field, if there's mud and gunk in the gun, uh, the idea is if you're overgassed, you can keep you can keep grinding through uh, round after round uh, with an overgassed system, or if it's not oiled well or whatever. Um, overgassing is a way to keep the system running. So obviously it's not optimal. Um, as you can see here um, in the diagram that prolative arms provided. So if you watch the pattern of your brass as it's ejecting as you shoot, um, if you see this one to two o'clock pattern of your brass being ejected, that means you're overgassed. Um, what we want is between this three and four o'clock position. That's that's where if we see our brass ejecting in that range. That's optimal. And if it's past four o'clock, then it's undergassed. Undergassed means that you're not getting enough gas back to cycle the gun properly, and so you want more gas to go through. So with an adjustable gas system, we can tune our gun to fire between this three and four o'clock range. And if we're spending a day out at the range and we're running it hard, um, we can make these adjustments as the day goes on or as the need arises to, uh, to keep our gun running the way we want to. So what are the benefits of having it run between this three and four o'clock position? Well, according to uh, superlative, um, proper gun cycling of the, of the BCG, um, less recoil around, allowing faster follow-up shots, uh, less heat and carbon fouling um, on your system, minimize wear on your internal components. So those are all good, uh, good reasons to, to put an adjustable gas block system on. So all of my guns, except the one I'm getting ready to do, have um, these adjustable gas blocks on them. Um, I like them. They've run well for me. And um, this is the last, last AR I have to make that change. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install our gas tube into our gas block. So if you look inside the gas block you've got a hole right here so this hole is what sits over top of the barrel itself so the gas port from the barrel is going to push gas up into this hole our gas tube needs this hole on our gas tube needs to line up with the hole in the gas block. So we'll insert the tube like that and then we're going to pin it through this hole here. So as gas exits the barrel it's going to come into this hole up and then back down the gas tube down to the bulk carrier group which will then cycle the gun. Alright so I've got this lined up pretty good already. So as you can see, there we go. As you can see, my gas tube is pushed all the way back, and it's lined up with that hole where we will drive our Um, roll pin into.
So that's a 564 by 516 inch roll pin, I believe, is what we said earlier. So I'm going to put a little dab of oil on that to help it go through. I'm going to use a starter roll pin punch. So this is sitting at a weird angle for hammering. Slide everything over a little bit. All right, so my starter roll pin punch is bottomed out. We're looking good from that side. So I'm going to take a number two or a 564 inch row pin punch and let's finish the job here. One more tap and I think we'll be done here. Alright, that looks pretty good. So that's all it takes to assemble. I'm using my shirt to clean this off. That's all it takes to assemble the gas block itself. So before installing the gas block onto the barrel, I want to remove the set screw closest to the upper receiver. This is the set screw. If you have a dimple on your barrel, this would be the set screw that would go into the dimple. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little oil inside the gas block just so it doesn't mar up the finish of the rifles we're sliding it on. Sliding gas tube on. And we want to make sure that we're lined up exactly over that dimple, which we are. So I'm going to put this set screw back in without the red Loctite. This is going to seat down into that dimple. And I'm going to remove this set screw. And I'm going to apply the red Loctite to this one, which red Loctite, this is that brand is actually Permatex, it's actually white in color when it comes out, but it is a high temperature uh, thread sealant. I'm getting to come out. Just a dab. So red Loctite is much harder to get off. Um, you need heat. So if you take these off in the future, you'll want to take a heat gun, blow some heat on it, and then they'll loosen right up so you can remove them. All right, so I'm going to hand tighten this. Now I'm going to remove the set screw that's in the dimple. I'm 
and apply our Loctite to that. Now we can take our torque wrench. So the specs are 25 pounds for these set screws. Uh, sorry, not 25 foot pounds, 25 inch pounds. There we go. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right. So let's clean up some of that lock tight. All right. So our gas system is now installed. That looks pretty good. And that's all it takes to install a gas system on an AR-15 upper receiver. To install the muzzle brake on our AR-15 upper receiver, we'll need our muzzle brake and a crush washer. For this muzzle brake, we'll need a 3 quarter inch wrench and we'll use some barrel neck grease for some uh, minor lubrication. Installation of our muzzle brake is probably the easiest job we have on our upper receiver. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a light coat of lubrication on the threads of the barrel just to make it a little easier in the future if we take it off it won't stick on us I'm not going to put a ton on here just a light just a light coat First, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our crush washer on. So the crush washer has a rounded side and it has a flat side. We want the rounded side to go against the barrel. The flat side will go against our muzzle brake. And then we'll thread our muzzle brake on. So some muzzle brakes will have this crush washer, some of them will have shims. Um, the crush washer makes it a little easier because it's going to give you some flex as you tighten it on. Um, the shims, you have to play around with those a little bit to get them indexed correctly so you can tighten your, tighten your muzzle device down. Um, I'm not real clear on torque specs for muzzle devices. It seems like it's kind of all over the board depending on the manufacturer um, although it seems like what I'm seeing fairly common is like a 15 to 25 pound torque spec but uh, don't hold me to that it could be it could vary greatly just just check with the um, device that you have and see what they recommend so I'm going to put a little tape on here so my wrench doesn't mar up the muzzle brake and now it's just a matter of tightening it down. One thing you don't want to do with these crush washers is you don't want to over tighten and then back it up. Because once you back it up, then you lose the tension that you achieved by putting it on. So I want these two ports to be pointing straight up. 
and I don't want to go past the middle. So maybe just a little hair more. Leave it at that. Eyeballing it, that's uh, it's pretty centered up. So that's all it takes to install a muzzle brake on your AR-15 upper receiver. To assemble our bolt carrier group, we've got a lot of components here. We've got the bolt carrier, got the firing pin, we've got the firing pin cam pin, firing pin retaining pin, we've got the bolt, we've got our extractor, extractor pin, ejector, ejector spring, and ejector retaining pin, or roll pin, ejector roll pin. We'll need a block, we'll need a hammer, a number 2 or 564 punch, and a number 1 or 1 16th inch punch. To begin, I'm going to assemble the bolt. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my ejector roll pin, and I'm going to insert it, at least get it started, into the hole in the bolt. Now I'm going to take my ejector spring. I'm going to insert it into this hole right here. Let's get it pushed all the way in there. Now I'm going to take my ejector, so if you look at our ejector, get it where you can see it. So we've got that groove in it, we've got a short end and we've got a long end. So I want the short end going in first, and there's the ejector hole. I want the groove facing toward the middle of the bolt like this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a punch, the 1 16th inch punch, and on the other side of the hole where we have the roll pin, I'm going to insert it in there till it stops. Then I'm going to take my thumb. I'm going to depress the ejector. And while I do that, I'm going to push inward with my punch. And when I've pushed it enough, it's going to push in a little further and it's going to catch that ejector. So I'm going to push down. Yeah, there we go. So it caught. And it's under tension now. Spring tension from the spring and the ejector is now holding that punch in. So now what we've got to do is we've got to now push this punch the rest of the way through. my block. Like that. I'm going to try to push it in versus hammering it. Let's see if I can do that. It's 
push part of the way. Actually pushed actually pushed my punch out of the way. Let's go ahead and hammer it in at this point. So I'm going to take a, a 1 16th inch or a number one roll pin punch and we'll finish it off that way. Alright, now if you can see that, we've got it driven in and it's pretty even. Take our punch, just do a quick function check. So the projector pushes in and it releases the spring tension. Alright, so we've got that part done. Now we have to put our extractor in. So here's our extractor. Here's your extractor spring. Um, some bolts have this rubber gasket. Uh, some do, some don't. This particular one does. So we'll go with it. So our extractor. Here's our extractor end. It's going to go like that. Here's our extractor pin. Well, at this point, all I'm going to do, is so you can kind of see down the hole there, if I press the top down, top of the extractor down, it kind of gives, and gives us some clearance to push that pin in. So I can just push it in with finger pressure now. So that completes the assembly of the bolt. Alright, so now let's complete the assembly of the entire bulk carrier group. First thing I'm going to put some oil where the bolt's going to go. I'll put a little on here as well. And on our rings. So we insert the bolt into the bolt carrier. We want our ejector pin at about the 5 o'clock position. And when you look down where the firing pin cam pin is going to go, we've got a hole that lines up there for us. So when I, the way I lubricate my cam pin is I use uh, gun grease instead of oil. It's just a little heavier. And it's going to hold up a little longer, at least in my opinion it does. I don't think you can go wrong with oil or grease. So that's going to drop in. Like that. And we're going to rotate it at a 90 degree angle so the rectangle is the long sides are perpendicular to the bolt. Let's insert our firing pin. And now we'll insert our firing pin retaining pin. Alright, and that's all there is to it. Now I typically also use uh, gun grease on the lugs here instead of oil again just because I think it holds up longer. Some people are going to argue that it collects more grit and grime and perhaps it does. But this is the way I do it. Other points of lubrication uh, again, I use gun grease. Use a lubricate here and here. There and there. 
on the bottom I'll lubricate here and here and that's all the lubrication or all the, the areas that I lubricate on my bow carrier it's time to wrap up the assembly of our upper receiver this one tail installing our uh, front handguard our bulk carrier group and our charging handle let's begin by installing our front handguard so I've got an arrow precision if you recall I installed an arrow precision um, barrel nut this is an arrow precision um, enhanced M-Lock Gen 2 handguard So I've got eight screws. Um, each screw will take 25 inch pounds of torque. And I'll apply a little blue Loctite to each screw. I'm going to hand tighten these until I get them all in. Alright, I've got them all, all the screws hand tightened down. And now we will torque them down. It's nice and secure. It's got a good feel to it. I think I'm going to like this handguard. Alright, um, now let's install our charging handle. I've already uh, lubed it up with some gun oil. And my bolt carrier, I've lubricated that with gun grease. Um, make sure when you install your bulk carrier that your lugs are in the out position, otherwise it won't install. Alright. So other accessories we need to install on our upper receiver include our backup iron sights. These are Troy built battle sights. And we'll also be installing an in EOTech, uh, I believe this is an XPS2 model, if I recall correctly. So when you install your battle sights, you want to make sure you're pushing back on the sight as you tighten it up. And the CO tick is a QD. So all we have to do is there we go. 
attach our lower to our upper. All right, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good looking gun, I think. Pretty pleased with it. So our last uh, thing to do would be to take it to the range and uh, test fire it and zero in our iron sights and optic. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my other AR-15 assembly and disassembly videos. Um, as always, if uh, you like, please leave your comments below and I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.